Hi, Saints. Sunday night, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. And we're going to talk about why does your family hate you so much? This video is going to be posted on my YouTube channel. You can subscribe to me if you haven't already. So, I will introduce myself to those that don't know me. My name is Yasmin Suri. I am from India. I was born in India. That is my heritage. And God has delivered me from the powers of darkness and translated me into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus. He has broken the chains of Satan and his power over me. I have come out of white witchcraft, the occult, false religion, the false religion of my ancestors, of my family members, of my father, my mother, my gr grandfather, grandmother, great-grandfather, great-grandmother. Uh, I came out of false religion and divination and the occult and witchcraft that I grew up in. So most of this false religion and false teaching comes from India. So what happened is when you get saved and you become born again out of any false belief system, whether it be from mine, from India, or whether it be from any Buddhist or any false religion, New Age, legalism, false Christianity, Mormonism, Jehovah Witness, Christian science, Scientology, cults, other cults within Christianity, you will be hated. Why does your family hate you? So we're going to talk about that. And we're going to, listen, I know it's the holidays. This is a tough time for a lot of people. So I'm going to help you navigate through this whole season and you guys know that I do Christian uh, spiritual counseling and I'm very busy. I do it almost six to seven days a week. So if you want to contact me, my information will be included under this video when I am finished and also on my YouTube channel. So why do does your family member hate you so much? Why do family members hate you so much? Always remember, it's not always spiritual, and I'm going to break down what isn't spiritual and what is spiritual, of why they might hate you. So not everything is spiritual, and many people put it under the guise that of spirituality that they say, well, I'm a Christian, and that's why they hate me. Well, let's break down what that means, okay? <laughs> yeah. Because a lot of people think it's because they're Christians why their family hates them. A lot of you it is. Beloved, a lot of you it is. You follow the Lord and you are a straight, narrow, solid Christian. But others, we're going to talk about scripturally, are hated by their family and they hide it under the guise of Christianity when it's really because they're evildoers bearing the name of Christ. So if you would like to share this video on your page, that would be wonderful. Again, my name is Yasmin Suri. I was born in India. I am from India. I am South Asian. I am 100% Indian, probably a mixture of stuff. I'm sure. <laughs> but, uh, so anyways, I now reside in the United States and I got delivered believing in the false gods of my family and culture. So you guys know mm -hmm, that I have dealt with this on a very personal level, but we're, we're not going to talk about me today. We're going to talk about you and we're going to talk about the Lord today. Why does your family hate you so much? And I pray the Lord gives me wisdom to speak to someone that's really going through it today and in this season this is a tough season 
for so many of you because of the holidays and because of the false responsibility that you feel that you have to do what the narrative of your family is and that means being with them even though they're haters so we're going to talk about this ready okay so we're going to take the scripture out of matthew 10 and we're going to start with um 20. the lord says for it will not be you speaking but the spirit of your father speaking through you so Jesus said that those that know the Lord, and I hope I'm talking loud enough because somebody said I don't talk loud enough because I have a very soft voice, but strong singing voice for the national anthem and God bless America and <laughs> the song everybody's sick of, Mary, did you know? <laughs> anyway, so listen, I'm trying to talk stronger, okay? I have a very soft speaking voice, so... So the Lord said, the spirit of your father will be speaking through you. So Jesus is talking about setting us as sheep among the wolves. So he's saying to us, you got the spirit of God in you. <laughs> when you got the spirit of God in you, it's the Holy Spirit speaking through you to people around you. Okay. So you got people around you that are unbelievers that are wolves and you're the sheep of the Lord. And you're around wolves. And he said he's going to send you as sheep among the wolves. The wolves are your family too. You got me? Then Jesus said, brother will betray brother to death. A father, his child. Children will rise up against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of my name, but the one who pers perseveres to the end will be saved. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Let's, this is really real stuff. She, what, what else did Jesus say? He said in Matthew 10, what did he say? Do not assume. See, assuming is really sinful and it's dangerous. So assuming means that you have premeditated already the, the thoughts of God. You've already premeditated what's going on in your family. You, see, in our, pre, in our presumptions, we think, God bless them. They don't know any better. You know, bless your heart. Bless your, bless your heart. God is saying, do not assume don't even assume what he's doing assumption is sin but to know the truth is what sets you free not the truth of somebody else but the truth of god's word not the truth about you not the truth about me i don't want to hear it what your assumption is or predisposition is regarding how you feel about me or how i feel about you we're going to test everything by the word of god so jesus said in the beginning do not assume that I have come to bring peace on earth. That means don't think in your own natural ability, your own natural thought process, because anything natural produces death. It cannot understand the things of God. So Jesus said, don't assume, quit assuming what people are doing, what people are thinking, the best about people, you know, the only good about people and not the evil about people. Instead of seeing it through God's eyes, God wants you to see spiritual things as spiritual. Do you understand? You following me? So he says, do not assume that I have come to bring peace on this earth. I have not come to bring peace. Jesus just said that. Did I say that? Because everybody's talking about Christmas right now, peace on earth and goodwill to all men. You cannot get peace without Jesus. He didn't bring to bring peace on earth. He didn't die to bring peace on earth without going through him. You understand? Y'all following me? Peace on earth and goodwill to all men means going through Jesus. You got to repent. You got to be washed in the blood. You got to claim him as your only king, your only God, your only savior. That's the only way. 
turn from your sins and turn completely to him. So he said, I have not come to bring peace, but a sword for I have, what is a sword? We're going to talk about that I, for I have come to turn a man against his father. Wow. That, wow. Honor your father and mother. Mm. Okay. This is like, Jesus, why are you saying this? Because you said, honor your father and mother. But he says, I have come to turn a man against his father. A daughter against her mother. Wait, what do you mean I have come to turn? Jesus is doing this. He's coming to bring division with your own parents. <laughs> what? What? But Jesus, you said, honor your father and mother. And it comes with a promise, long life. Or else, you know, he that curses father or mother, he'll be snuffed out. Okay, God's not lying about that either, but follow me. Let's follow God. He says, I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Wow. If you got enemies, you don't need friends. I'm telling you, with your own family. If your own family can turn on you, beloved, anybody can turn on you because that's your blood. You got it? That's your blood. If your blood can turn on you, anybody can turn on you that's not your blood. Are you following me? Okay. I want you to follow me. Okay. So listen, keep following me here. Okay. Anyone who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. If you are doing things that your parents want you to do that are against the Bible, the gospel of Jesus Christ, you have made them an idol in your life. Mm -hmm. If you support them in their fornications and immoralities and homosexualities, you have put them ahead of God. You're not worthy of him. Jesus just said that. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That means if your son or daughter is doing drugs or getting drunk or homosexual or fornicating or lying, committing crimes, all this stuff, and you are supporting them and you're behind them, and there's no consequence here, you love them more than you love Jesus. That's why y'all get along. That's why, that's why y'all get along with your family as professing Christians because you don't take a stand for anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're spineless. Okay. Jesus said that. You're not worthy of him. That means you ain't his. That's what he just said. Did I, did I write the Bible? I didn't write the Bible. Anyone who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. That means you ain't worthy to have him. Like he ain't your, he ain't your Lord and, or savior. Like he don't, he, he doesn't care what you say. It's what you do. If you love your daughter or your son more than him and you stick up for what their immoral beliefs are, but you don't defend the gospel of Jesus Christ to your own parents or son or daughter, you are not worthy to be called the child of God. That's what he's saying. This is what he's saying. Did I did I write the Bible? Don't shoot the messenger. And if anyone does not take up his cross and follow me, it's not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. I didn't read the Bible. I, I mean, I didn't write the Bible. I read it. I didn't write it. Now, there are so many of you that have enemies in your family, okay? But we are talking about true servants of God for you that follow Jesus, that take up your cross and follow him, that deny yourself worldly and you deny unworldly and ungodly lust, okay? Those are the people he's talking about. He's also talking to people. We're not talking about people that are, you know, that are not in the straight and narrow, there are many Christians out there that are living in having sex outside of marriage. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read the scripture to you. 
that like to cuss once in a while, that like to get drunk or go to bars and do all this stuff and slander, slander and lie about other people, gossip, backbiters, haters, revilers, abusers. We're not talking about that because what they, those are false people that have not held to the doctrine of Jesus Christ that have fallen away from the faith. They're self-deceived according to Jude 1 and 4. The Bible says for certain individuals whose condemnation was written long about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. Listen, y'all, <laughs> these are your friends that are saying, I can look at porn and still go to heaven. I can sleep around. God understands my desires. I can sleep around and still go to heaven even though, you know, I'm not married to that person. These are people that say God doesn't mind if I have a lesbian or homosexual relationship. He understands that this is a really big temptation. I'm not happy with my husband or wife. Or maybe some guy hurt me so much that I just want to go try, you know, having sex out, you know, with a woman now. Or, you know, if a guy says, well, my wife doesn't satisfy me sexually, so I'm going to go and have, you know, sex with another guy because they understand more than the woman. The woman is just a nightmare to me. Mm -hmm. So what happens is there are ungodly people who pervert the grace of God. They, they're under God's grace. They say, don't worry about it. You're covered by the grace of God. You're covered. And these people hate you. They're in your family, y'all. That's why they hate you so much. They think they can just keep doing whatever they're doing. Getting high, getting drunk, supporting homosexuality, lesbianism, abortions, whatever it is. In your family, professing Christians and they say you can you're you're under God's grace God's under God understands you're covered by the grace of God so God addresses this in Jude 1 4 oh, sorry um the Bible says they are ungodly people who pervert the grace of God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ our only sovereign and Lord did I write the Bible? But God understands we're under grace, not works. <laughs> really? Then he didn't need to, he didn't even need to read write most of the Bible. He's talking about God's judgment on the ungodly. These are people that profess to be Christians in your family that pervert the grace of God. To, as a license to do immorality, Jude 1 through 4. Are you, are you okay? So, because you're on the straight and narrow, and you're like, <laughs> homosexuals are, are not going to heaven, they're going to hell if they don't repent. We can love them, but we don't support them. We don't go to their weddings, we don't support their adoptions, we don't support their anything, okay? We ain't even going to let them in our house as a couple because we don't support it. Because as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord according to the book of Joshua. <laughs> Did I write the Bible? No. <laughs> That's God's word coming to life. It ain't yes means word. I don't, I don't get God to agree with me. I have to agree with God. Are you following me? Because some of you listening right now are so deceived. Majority of you are deceived, actually. There's very few of you that really do know the truth, but majority of you in this world are going to be deceived. Jesus said, most will come into me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, most, many, most. So I'm talking to the deceived people. I'm talking also to the non-deceived people that are really trying to navigate and how to deal with these situations and why they deal with it, okay? So another reason why your family hates you is because they claim to be Christians, but they're evildoers. Again, it's kind of like what I just read out of Jude, but in 1 Peter 4.15, it's written, if you're insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Yeah, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Indeed. He says, indeed, 
None of you should suffer as a murderer, a thief, a wrongdoer. We're going to talk about wrongdoers or even as a meddler. But if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but glorify God that you bear his name. So the Lord is saying, listen, if you're insulted, that's part of God's glory in your life. Especially when you serve the Lord, they'll find anything they can to get you. Okay. <laughs> anything. That's why, beloved, you can't trust people that are not sold out for God and that have no spiritual understanding. They have natural understanding of the word, but not spiritual. So they don't have the rhema or the revelation of God's word. They don't walk in the spirit. They don't even know what it means to walk in the spirit so that you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. They only have natural understanding. Even with the word of God, they're religious people. Religious people are your worst enemies. Those that usually grew up in church. Mm -hmm. Those people that grew up as Christians their whole lives and never really sinned that much. Those are your worst enemies. Those people that don't really sin like you have, okay? So they'll look down on you and they'll be... They, and even if they don't look down on you, they will have no understanding about the spiritual things of God. You are in connection with the Lord. You hear the voice of God. You hear the shepherd's voice. He said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger's voice they will not follow. But these people around you in your family, ships, they bear the name of Christ or they may not. But they're both dangerous, okay? Whether your family members hate you that bear the name of Christ, those are the hardest ones to reach. Those are the Pharisees, the religious people that turn the grace of God into licentiousness, into a lie. They're immoral. They practice immorality and think that God is okay because they're covered under grace. They're more dangerous than the total unbelievers because at least... You know what you're getting with a total unbeliever, okay? You know what you're getting. You're, they just don't care about Jesus. They hate him. And they'll tell you. So what happens is in your own family, the Bible says if you bear the name of Christ, you shouldn't suffer. Listen, some of y'all are bearing the name of Christ or people around you saying they're Christians. <laughs> you know what? They're murderers. He said, suffer as a murderer, not just killing somebody. I'm not talking about self-defense. It also means murdering someone's spirit. Let's talk about if you're a murderer. If you go to someone and you start cutting them down, you're a murderer. If you start telling them you no good for nothing loser, you're a murderer at heart. If you start telling them it's a, you know, it's a no wonder that anybody likes you because you're so nasty and you're so, you're, you're such a loser. You're a murderer. If you call people losers, you're a murderer. If you attack people for their testimony and their witness for Christ, you're a murderer. Even if you call yourself a Christian, if you attack another believer, and you start gossip, gossiping about them because you don't like them. You're a murderer at heart because you're there to kill their spirit. You're there to murder them and crush them so that they are ineffective for the kingdom of God. A slanderer is a murderer at heart. A liar, a false witness is a murderer at heart. God hates seven things. Seven things are an abomination to him. Murderer. Mm -hmm. pours out lies, slanderer, causing discord among the brethren. You're a murderer at heart. So Jesus said, indeed, none of you should suffer as a murderer. So you got this in your family. You got people in your family causing problems with each other. There's smear campaigns going on. There's triangulation going on. There's all kinds of stuff going on while they're going to church or maybe they're going to a Hindu temple. I don't know. It's all the same. So you shouldn't be suffering. You, if you're calling yourself a Christian, why are you murdering people's spirits around you in Jesus' name? Why are you doing that? 
Why are you a thief? Why are you borrowing money and not paying it back to people? Wait, you're supposed to be a Christian. A thief. Why are you buying, borrowing stuff from people and you're not giving it back to them? What, what about books you borrowed? You never gave it back to them. <laughs> That's a thief. Why are you borrowing money and not repaying people in your own family? Why can't you just even call them and say, you know what? I owe you like $50. I'll pay you like $2 a week or $2 a month. Instead, you're just ignoring them and you're calling yourself a Christian. And then people are like, you ain't a Christian because you're, you're a thief. What about your car payment? What about your house payment? What about your water bill? But you're going out and buying a brand new car and a brand new house and spending all this money on clothes, but you're not responsible for your own bills. And you're taking money from your parents. <laughs> or parents are taking money from their children. You're not, you're irresponsible. That's a thief, not paying your bills, which you owe. If you can't pay it back, declare bankruptcy or whatever you got to do to get back on track. But quit stealing. You following me? Okay, so what about a meddler? What is a meddler? Y'all, what is a meddler? A meddler is somebody that's into other people's business. So if you're calling yourself a Christian in your family, and then your brother or your sister or your auntie or uncle or parents are meddling in your business, and they're spreading around to everybody, that's, Jesus said that's an evil doer. It's none of y'all business. Get, stay out of people, people's business in your family that are going through stuff, like a divorce, okay? Or maybe, you know, they lost their home or, you know, maybe something horrible happened to them and, 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 but you got to tell everybody in the family, you got to get them all against each other. You're meddling. You're a busybody. Jesus said that's an evil doer because meddlers, you see, it's not that you just want to know the information because you care. It's you want to know it so you can have gossip to destroy that person. Does that make sense? You really want to destroy that person. And listen, you know what this video is for? It's for everybody that's, that's a human being because without Jesus, I was this way. Okay. I was, but I wasn't a Christian like this. Okay. If you're, in a in a bad state spiritually stop preaching and repent and sit down i have a problem just like jesus does with people in ministry that are in full-blown sin and they say i'm covered under the grace of god and you got family members like this and this is why you're having a problem with them and they don't like you because you're just too holy and too pure and too straight and narrow you're just too godly for him and they don't want to hear what you have to say because you're following the ways of Jesus, but they're calling you all kinds of names because Miss Perfect, Mr. Perfect, Mr. Holier Than Thou, Mr. Whatever. They're putting you down because they don't want to come up. They want you to come down to their level. They don't want to come up to Jesus' expectations and what he says that if any man says he knows me, but does not keep my commandments as a liar and the truth is not in him in the book of John, they don't want to come up to that level. They don't want to repent. They want to be happy in their sins. They want to keep doing what they're doing. So what happens? Galatians 4.16. Paul says, have I now become your enemy because I'm telling you the truth? So in your family, Jesus said, I came to send a sword. The sword is the word of God. The word of God divides the lies from the truth. The truth will divide. Okay. You guys follow me? The truth divides. So Paul said, have I become your enemy because I'm telling you the truth? So they accepted false teachers. They had no problem with false teachings and false teachers. But when you tell them the truth, 
They can't accept it. You become their enemy. Just like in the Bible, Jesus said, this stuff is going to happen. Are you guys following me? So this is what I wanted to share. Okay, this is all I wanted to share. And I'm done now. So I hope this video helped you. I know it was not a long one, but this is really important. You will have enemies in your own family when you are walking in integrity and in the word of God and in truth, and they're walking in lies and they accept homosexuality and abortion and they go to their weddings and they got family members that are gay and they just embrace it. They embrace them. They embrace it. We can love people, but not support their wicked evil abominations mm -hmm. we don't go over hanging at the married gay couple's house no not in the holidays we don't go visit them with dinner we don't do any of that you have to take a stand if you stand for nothing you fall for everything and that's what professing christians are doing in these end times i don't go over gay people's houses and have dinner with them mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't go to their weddings. Mm -mm. I ain't getting God mad at me. <laughs> I'm scared of God in a healthy way. I'm scared of him. I'm scared of God in a healthy way. If you know abortion is wrong, but yet you'll accept it under certain reasons, Yup, you ain't scared of God. There's a reason why you ain't scared of God. Because you don't have that same Jesus that I have. It's a different Jesus and a different gospel. If you hate the gospel that I have, the straight and narrow, you ain't saved. I don't care how much you go play in the church and sing in the choir and play your instruments. I don't care what you do. I don't care how much you preach. If you don't, if you're not in the straight and narrow, I'm not talking about a religious Pharisee. I'm talking about if you haven't repented from your dead works and evil and you ain't scared of God, you don't have no fear of the Lord. You're not his. You can profess Jesus till you're blue in the face. You're not going to heaven. You are saved by grace, not of works, but the works follow. Your life will be the evidence that you are saved, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, goodness, patience, self-control. But the problem is, y'all ain't got the fruit. Y'all mean, cussing, exploding, judgmental, looking down on people. Hating other Christians that are better than you, more popular than you, putting everybody down, legalistic, putting people down that wear makeup and change their hair, or have tattoos or jewelry. This is what you become when you're not a real Christian. Listen, 96% of the world is plain Jane average looking people and they're all Wicked as hell itself. You following me? Esty Lauder doesn't have the market. Satan does. The way you look on the outside, well, there's certain things that are evil. We all know naturally what those are, how you look on the outside. But the Pharisees, those that are inwardly like dead men's bones, they're they're evil inside, but they're righteous looking on the outside are wicked to Jesus. He says, outwardly you appear righteous to men, but inwardly you're dead. And that's how some of your family members are. And y'all going to hang out with him for the holidays? <laughs> I would not recommend it. But you can contact me for spiritual counseling if you would like. But listen, Jesus said, again, I'm going to end with this, right? For brother will betray brother to death. A father, his child, children will rise up against their parents and have them put to death. 
What does that mean? That's the Antichrist spirit versus the spirit of Jesus in us. Just because they profess Jesus does not mean it's the same Jesus as you. It's a false Jesus because they don't obey the word and they hate you for your narrow, bigot, narrow minded, bigoted, tongue talking, word professing ways because you're strict. Because you don't want to miss out on heaven. It's the way is narrow. But those family members that profess Christ hate you. Jesus came to send the sword. That sword divides. You understand. You can't get along with your family members because there it's a different gospel, a different Jesus. It's the new age Jesus that supports yoga. Hmm. It's a new age Jesus that supports Harry Potter. It's the new age Jesus that supports vibrations, the vibes. Namaste. It's the new age Jesus that supports Beth Moore contemplative prayer. Catholicism. People believe this false Jesus believes that Catholics are going to heaven. Catholicism is a cult. If you get saved, come out from among them, Jesus said. It's a, these are an, antichrist spirits. Billions of people carry antichrist spirit. Majority of people don't love the real Jesus. These people are after you to destroy you. They hate you with such a hatred. They don't even know what drives them. They don't know why they hate you so much. And you're strong. Even your name riles them up. They can't even stand your name. Say, say the name. Wait. What? Mary? John? Oh, they just, even your name riles them up because you represent Jesus and the demons that they operate through that hate Jesus hate you even your name riles them up in your family they don't they just bad mouth you they think you're crazy mm -hmm. just like they thought of paul they thought he was crazy and out of his mind and that's what they're thinking about you because you're crazy jesus believer you're not like them that is accepted by this evil demonic satanic society their jesus is what is that word? Tolerance of the evil of our day. But your Jesus is not tolerant of the evils of today. Okay, share this video. This is really important, okay? You guys got to understand why does your family hate you so much? You ain't going to fix it. The only thing that will fix it is if they get born again truthfully by the true Jesus, not the false Jesus. He said, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. Don't be deceived. Your Jesus and their Jesus or their falseness or their good prophet or good teacher, it ain't the same Jesus as you. See, your Jesus is the son of God and yet God. Their Jesus was like a good prophet and a good teacher. Yours is the mighty deliverer and the soon coming king. Their Jesus, he's tolerant of everything that's happening in this end times. So beloved, I hope this helped you. You are not going to fix this because Jesus said, I came to send a son against his father. I came to do this. I came to bring division, not peace. He said, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. Division, he came to do it. You're not causing this. It's because Jesus is in you and they hate the Jesus in you. Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. And if you have no enemies, because you're walking with Satan. I don't care how much you think people should like you if you serve Jesus. You're self-deceived because Jesus said the opposite. One of y'all are wrong and it's you.
Jesus is not wrong. You are wrong. If you don't have any enemies that hate you for the gospel, because you're walking with Satan, you ain't saved. You ain't saved. Number three, you ain't saved. If you have no enemies because of your relationship with God, you ain't saved. You're on the devil's side. You walk hand in hand with Satan and you are tolerant of the demonic agenda of the satanic end time kingdom of tolerance. Kumbaya. I love everybody. You won't have any enemies in your family for sure. But let me remind you before I end. Those people in your family that don't get along with you who do stand up but get along with each other that are evil within amongst themselves that don't serve Jesus, they don't really love each other. You might feel like you're on the outside that serve Jesus completely, but your family members on the inside that get along with each other and, and talk about you, say all manner of evil falsely against you because of Jesus, they don't even get along with each other. They don't even really love each other because they don't know love because God is love. They don't like each other either. They don't even show each other the goodness and compassion and the love of God because their heart is so hard because they don't know Jesus. They don't even know forgiveness because you can't know forgiveness without receiving the forgiveness on the cross of Jesus Christ, his forgiveness for what we did to him is worldly forgiveness that is momentary, momentary. So they don't even love each other. Don't be deceived. Your family members that hate you because of Jesus don't even love each other. They're bickering about each other. They badmouth each other behind each other's back. They don't tell the truth. They lie to each other because they're under the spirit of lies, the father of lies. There is no love between them and there's no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. They're wicked. So don't think you're just on the outside because of your love for Jesus and they're all loving and happy together. They're not happy together because they won't repent and turn to Christ Jesus. They don't know love. They're blinded by Satan too. So pity them and pray for them because they don't know that Satan has them. Your evil family members that hate each other too. They hate you too, but they don't know they're going to be in hell. They're one heartbeat away from hell. So you got to pray for them. You got to because they're so deceived. Satan, the evil one, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers that they cannot receive the gospel of Jesus Christ as it is written, says the Lord. So they cannot see that they're deceived. They are in cahoots together and they're bound up by the devil together and they serve this false Jesus together or no Jesus together or mixture together. <laughs> okay. I hope this helped you. And please, if you need counseling from me, call me, call the ministry. I'm sorry, email the ministry. I'll have the email attached. I hope this helps you. Do not subject yourself to, listen, go spend holidays with your family that are unsaved as long as they're not out to destroy you or insult you and bring you down. Do not be with family members during the holidays. If any of them have to try to destroy you, your ministry, your your testimony anything and they have not completely repented and made restitution do not hang with them do not go over their house god says come out from among them separate yourself do not keep company with evil doers do not i don't care if they're your parents or your children i don't care who they are they still hate you they can't stop the hate. They're not saved. They still despise you. They're still jealous of you. They can't stop it. They still have unforgiveness towards you. They can't stop it. They've not been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. 
A leopard could not change its spots or the Ethiopian his skin color. Only Jesus can change a human heart. He said, I will take out your stony heart, which is a hard heart, and give you a heart of flesh that you would obey me and keep my commandments and my statutes. They haven't been born again of the spirit of God. They're religious. So you're putting yourself in harm's way. Listen, if they just make fun of you and they're not Christians, fine. As long as they're not out to destroy you, fine. But stay away from people that are out to destroy you, your calling, your ministry, your testimony, anything about you. Okay? Stay away from them. They're dangerous people. But if they just make fun of you, just go spend, be a light in darkness. If they're nice to you, but just, you know, whatever. Be a light in darkness. If they're cussing and drinking, getting drunk and getting high, do not go there. That's just foolishness. Jesus said, come out from them. He didn't say, accept your family. They're evil doers. You're not to, would you sit there and hang out with somebody that's sorting coke right in front of you and be tolerant of it? Some of y'all are doing that. And then a whole bunch of other things too. So God bless you. I'll talk to you guys next week. God willing, if Jesus comes, if the trumpet sounds, I'll see you in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Jesus is coming. We're in the end times. Don't be deceived. Great deception is happening. And people are dead in their spirit. Pray for them. That Jesus would visit them. Pray for them. They're on their way to hell. Pray for them. Have pity on the lost. Pray for them. Pray for the religious people that are going to church or quoting scripture and they don't even know Jesus, but they read their Bibles and they pray and they go to church and they, they're in ministry and they still don't know Jesus. They never have been born again of the Spirit of God. They don't even know what it means to be born again. They've never experienced it. Okay? God bless you. I love you. I thank you for supporting me in my ministry. Thank you. I love you so much. I just want to hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's all I want to hear. I'm here for you, not for me. God bless. I hope this helped. Have a blessed, amazing God-sent week. Bye.